Welcome back to the build of our family's forever home. One important thing about a high performance home is making sure that all the materials are as durable and easy to maintain as possible. And so welcome to the railing systems. And moving back to the south, Grace and I have remembered that bugs and the amazing aggressiveness of the greenery here, it's a very lush place to live in Atlanta, mean that you can't just assume that every time you go outside you're gonna have a nice place to be outside. You actually have to kind of intentionally design outside spaces. And even though it's not the same as an indoor, the, the controlling the physics, chemistry, and microbiology of the indoors is pretty uh, complex, out here really what you're trying to do is you know the weather is gonna happen to everything out here. And so decisions that we've made along the way trying to make sure that we have as rot resistant of siding as possible and that the deck is the same, our roof is as hardcore as possible, we're assuming that we might have some pretty serious windy rainy storms and that's why we did things like the hurricane test and what you need to remember is that the railings are going to be put together so that they will prevent a spheroid object of a certain size which is basically supposed to be a baby's head from passing out through it. So in order to do that, you have a couple of options. It's not limitless. You can work with wood, which is what most people do. Wood is, you know, a naturally occurring thing in the, in the world. So it varies from tree to tree, cut to cut. And there's a lot of variation in, in wood species, the stiffness in wood. Um, but when you go to something like aluminum, it's very consistent. It's made you know, in a mill. Wood contracts and expands at a higher rate than metal. So over time, things will settle, like your ground will settle, rain will affect it. So because it's such an important safety structure, yeah, you're gonna have to go back and make sure that your deck is still attached to your house and still structurally sound. So that, that's unfortunate part of wood. You can next move to glass. If you really wanted to be able to see through your railings and have them be as safe and also as transparent as possible. So our glass is tempered glass approved for Miami-Dade County use, which is 175 mile per hour wind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only the real drawback with glass is the cost. Everyone's deck is a little different and then the spacing between posts is different. So we have to custom cut the glass and that drives the cost up. So the last thing that's available is cable railings. This is uh, aircraft cable. You can see lighting systems nowadays used with it. And it has the benefit of being very slender, and so it's very transparent. And also, the cables that you see here are stainless steel. The black surface is aluminum. And so all of this met all the criteria that we wanted, and it has the benefit of being a very engineered system. So you can get exactly what you want without trying to make things work, because they build all of these components in a factory to your specifications. And so we were very excited to have this system, both for the outside spaces and also for the interior stairwell, which we'll show you as we finish the house up because of course we're just about to paint in there. So we're gonna focus on the outside systems in this video. Being metal, the lifetime on it is based on the, the paint surface. So, but the material itself, the creep on aluminum and metal is very low. So you won't have any issues with that, but you, at, over time, depending on your environment, you just have to you know, keep it clean. Just like anything that you keep outside, you have to maintain it. You, you pressure wash your house, pressure wash your driveway. You don't need to pressure wash these things, but a wipe down every six months to a year will help keep that system looking nice and new. Our plan eventually, although we can't afford it right now, is to enclose this rear deck in a screened enclosure that'll be made of aluminum. Uh, it has to be because I asked the structural engineer if I could build it out of wood, and he said, no, I quit. I'm not gonna do this for you. Um, so that's one of the limitations of wood is that it is heavy. Aluminum is a softer material. It allows a person to make custom shapes and profiles. That's why you have those different top rails because we made them on aluminum. Otherwise, you have restrictions from manufacturability if you use only stainless steel. The cables obviously are very strong, but these posts can be spaced as far apart as five feet. And so that's really nice also for having the view through and having as few penetrations and things you have to do to modify the wood underneath. Depends on how you want to be able to attach them because we wanted to inset all of this railing since we're planning ahead for that aluminum superstructure, the lanai screen enclosure, so that we could have the screen go outside of it. So you could still lean on this, put your drinks on top. For some reason, this is in my head that like, 
I want to come out here and put my drink down and lean on the, that just seems very luxurious to, to me. This, unfortunately, doesn't meet ADA requirements. So if you're an, uh, somebody who's a little bit uh, injured or a little older or sick for some reason and you stumble on the stairs and you reach out to grab something, this really wide surface does not count in that calculation. They have requirements on the maximum diameter circumference of the profile so that a person's hand can actually grab it. So some of our top rails get a little too big for a person to use their normal size hands unless they're shack or something. So. <laughs> so you have to kind of consider all of this stuff when you're going to this. And if you get into the prescriptive codes, if you want to read your code book on how to build a deck prescriptively, which is you follow this recipe, it gets really hairy. So code is 200 pounds per linear foot. And we've done some on-site testing on the post itself for deflection, how it performed under tension, because our cables require a lot of tension to keep them taut. We'll have like 220 pound guys jump on the cable, hang on it like a monkey and make sure that, that uh, nothing happens because you know it is a safety product. So this system, very simply put, you attach all of the posts. First, you have to locate where the posts are. Make sure that there's enough wood underneath for you to attach. I think it's five inches lag bolts. So you have at minimum four inches of engagement to make sure that the post stays in place when you apply the 500 pounds of force to it. So you put those in place and then run the cable. And running the cable is a little bit tricky because this cable is, is very beautiful. It's wound. And so it's in a certain direction. And you wanna make sure as you're pushing it through these holes in the posts, that it does not come unwound. Because once you start it fraying at the end, just like a string, you're not ever gonna get that thing through a little hole anymore. So there are ways to rewind it if you make a, a very simple, small mistake. But if you get it frayed enough, which we did on our first time through, uh, didn't realize that it was fraying as we're trying to slam it up through the, the, the hole on the inside, you're gonna need to cut that away. And they, in fact, include a cutter in the kit that you get from RailFX. It turns a drill into a cable cutter. Then you tighten them down, which is a very simple process. Going through that last post is kind of a, an interesting thing. After doing three decks with this, on the third one, my parents finally, and they were the main workers on this project, this was theirs, they finally had figured out that in order to get through that last junction, first thing is you stick it in your mouth. Um, just to lube it up a little bit. And so that's like, the, that's the kind of thing that you wouldn't know unless you had done this a few times before. So my dad has a very nice technique and he just puts it right through there. It goes right through this nut that normally tends to lock up. You're kind of twisting it as you go through if you don't use the stick it in the mouth technique. Either way, it's fairly simple to do. And you can see both my mom and dad who have never done this before had a pretty simple time of it. Uh, that being said, there's always, just like in any construction, there are things that happen and, you know, mistakes are made. You can't really just order one huge uh, spool of the cable because each of the cables comes with the, the bolt, basically, that you're going to use to tension it at the end. The cables, we do recommend going back at some point later and just retensioning them some, just so that they, they stay even and they stay nice and taut. That's really easy with our system. That just a little Allen wrench at the end and you just turn it usually like a quarter turn, that's it. You only have to do it on one end. Last step is you have to put the rail down on top and all of this stuff, because it's made in a factory, it's very beautiful and easy. And I cannot tell you how many times I had a piece of wood that's supposed to be a two by six or a two by eight or whatever. And it is not an inch and a half thick. It is not whatever it is supposed to be high, you know, they're all different. So you always have to kind of like be shaving down wood and you can do that, which is nice, but I just would rather have things fit perfectly, which this does. So you kind of have to shimmy this down onto the top of the post, which it fits very snugly around. And the last step after you fasten those so that it's not going to go anywhere is that you put on the cover plate on the bottom. You can see the one place where we had an interesting problem here is on this giant roof overhang. That roof overhang is about 13 feet. And so the structural engineer required that we had not just the six by six post at the end, holding up the end of the roof, but also this four by four on the balcony itself. And that four by four is of course, right in the way of where we wanna put the railings. And so we had to butt, uh, not just go through the post with the wires, 
but also then we had to butt the railing, the top rail, into both sides of it, which ended up being a fairly simple process. My dad got a little piece of hardwood that fit perfectly inside the rail, which of course is hollow. An alternative to that is to have a post and then put posts for the railing on each side of it. But in a very small space, like a six foot deep balcony, uh, that ends up being a lot of posts in a very short amount of space. And so in order for it to look pretty, which is of course very important, we opted up there to just go through the post and to attach to both sides of it. And so black here, very easy. On the inside, you'll see a different color that we opted for, and you'll see why when we give you that video later on in the process. Please do comment if you have other things to add about railing systems and ways to configure them. Like and subscribe if you want to follow us through the end of this build, which is coming very soon. We should be moved in here by Christmas. Tune in next time.